here or you're a parent of a student who enjoys choir, uh, there are going to be a couple different changes. So one is, if you have a ninth grade student, uh, they are not going to be eligible to be in chamber. Chamber is still our select choir, but they are trying that nine, grade nine can only be in the Highland Air or in the Bel Canto. This is basically going to be your, your male choir. This is going to be your female choir. All will require auditions at all three levels. Um, and there are at least four formal concerts that will take place for all three of those courses uh, each year. The big difference there is that some students previously could go straight into chamber as a ninth grade student. Pathways, as we're all thinking and focusing on what is life beyond high school, many students are trying to take some coursework during their high school career to help prepare them for life after high school. And so we offer a lot of courses that can tailor students down into these career paths. And so oftentimes there can be a certification that is associated with that, which can be very, very beneficial as great resume boosters and great ways to get verification during their high school career before they declare a major in college that that's a path that they're interested in. And these are examples of just some of the pathways that we do offer. So if you have a student here, and it's not too late if you're a junior now and you're just kind of thinking, you know, I really am interested in engineering, it's not too late to sign up and take some of those engineering courses next year. Family consumer science, the accounting of courses in our business department, early childhood education, that's another one. If, if you have a student who potentially wants to work with young children, um, fashion interior design, cinematography, video production, teaching and learning, and information and support services. You're gonna see here, uh, we do, and I'll allude to this later in the presentation, um, there is, uh, we have an HHS scheduling headquarters, and there's different things here, I know it's kind of hard to see, but there's information here about those pathways that you can go into much more detail based on your student's interests. So what's next? as far as scheduling. We've kind of talked about some of the broader pieces to be thinking about as your student is selecting their senior courses. This is just a timeline of events that we anticipate are going to be happening in the next month. This week on Tuesday we have a video that we will be sharing the general overview with all of our students here at Highland. And this is where we're going to talk about the scheduling process to give them that general overview. And then as counselors, we're going to be in classes during focus period with all of our students to basically be meeting with them to help them actually do the physical scheduling in Infinite Campus. What happens is, is then they're going to, once they get those course requests into Infinite Campus, they're going to print out a sheet. And by the 28th, they need to have mom or dad's signature on that sheet and turned into their advisory teacher. All students uh, signed course selection sheets are final and due by January 31st. Okay, so by the end of this month, your student has to have that signed course request sheet turned into their advisory teacher and those courses are final. Okay? Any questions about the timeline? Yes? Um, where can they find, like prior to, I know you're gonna work with them the 18th and the 27th, but is, is there a place that we can what classes are offered yep. to have I'm going to get to that in just a minute okay. with the course catalog. Yeah, that's a great resource to use. So some scheduling considerations. I mentioned that dual credit website that we do have. So specifically, if you're interested in some dual credit options for your student, check that out. This is that uh, graphic that you saw in the previous slide at scheduling.hhsbird.com. This has all kinds of information, including things about our course catalog, our listing of our electives, and so forth. So these are going to be those valuable resources that you can get on. And I do encourage you to spend some time at home to talking with your students about their goals for their future and picking courses uh, that will align with that. Some other tips. That video that we are going to be showing students, I get it right now. There's a whole lot going on with the pandemic. Kids might be out. Don't panic. We are going to upload this to the HHS Film and Broadcasting YouTube channel. So this might be a resource, especially parents, if you want to encourage your student to go back and take a look at that. That is going to be online. Also, because students are going to be putting their requests into Infinite Campus, I get it, they have a lot of online accounts, they may forget what their username or password is. So I've just got some tips here that usually their username is going to start with their 10-digit student ID number. It usually starts with that 212. And their password is whatever they decided it was. 
uh, but I get that sometimes they may forget. If they click forget password, that reminder email is gonna go to their school email, okay? So don't tell them not to panic if they forget their password. It's just that reminder and that link is gonna go to their school email. That course catalog I mentioned before, the course catalog is what I call your Bible to high school. It's gonna contain everything in regards to academic policies, graduation requirements, information about dual credit courses, but also it's gonna list out a description for every single course that we offer at Highlands. Uh, so specifically as your child is thinking about what courses that they wanna take, go in there and look at those descriptions. And I also encourage your student to go talk to the teacher that's teaching that course. That's a great way to get that information and really get the nitty gritty of what to expect uh, in taking that course. So in order to get the course catalog, just listing out, you go to the Highlands High School website, when you click on quick links in the counseling department, you'll see then that there's a link that says to the course catalog for the 22-23 school year. Again, I do remind everybody that all course selections are final. The way that we develop a master schedule is by what you all as students choose. So when you go and change your minds and we don't have the, the space, it's because we base our projections on our master schedule on what you choose in this process. So that's why it's very, very important that you make informed decisions about those courses. So let's talk a little bit about the senior journey. Um, I know that this is overwhelming because this is where everybody starts all of a sudden feeling like the real world is just on the other side of senior year. So we're gonna help you through it. The first and foremost is making sure that your student has completed that pre-college curriculum. So what the pre-college curriculum is is basically the graduation requirements in Kentucky plus two years of world language. That's what the pre-college curriculum is, okay? So that's the first thing that students need to be in order to be ready for uh, the college or university side um, or even sometimes for certain specific skills traits. We want them to be informed. So how can they get informed? Well, first of all, we use a program that's called SCOIR, S-C-O-I-R. When we met with students in their classrooms in September, we did encourage them to set up a parent account for you and you should have received an email in September when that student set up and put your information in there, inviting you to have a parent account. Now in the parent account, you won't be able to do anything in SCORE, but you will be able to see all the information that your student is putting in that web-based student account. And there's all kinds of great things in SCORE uh, there. It links most specifically to what is called their youth science account. This is basically a, um, an aptitude website that we use that students go in and that is how it projects with, based on their aptitudes, careers that would be a good fit for them. We started this actually when your students were in eighth grade and we've continued to build on it over the last three years. So uh, this is a great place that all of that gets linked in SCORE. It's like a one-stop shop. It's also a place where they will um, list things like their resume and that's where they will find scholarship information. It's not a replacement to Naviance, but it's certainly another tool that we're throwing in the mix for our students. The other part that I would say, just knowing, is testing. Although a lot of colleges and universities are going test optional, just like there are conversation about dual credit, lots of colleges and universities are still using those scores to make informed decisions about your students' schedules or ability to take certain courses. So even though it's not necessarily used for admission, testing is important. So you always want to encourage your students to do their very best. Uh, there are some great resources on ACT student and College Board. College Board is the platform that supports the SAT. I will tell you there are some differences between the SAT and ACT. We've talked about that uh, before. Uh, specifically with the math and the science, there is no science on the SAT. And in the math, there's two sections, with calculator and without calculator. Uh, so I always tell students, uh, although we are an ACT state in Kentucky, because that's who our request for proposal, that's the ACT is who we use, all colleges and universities use both SAT and ACT scores. So if your student just didn't do really well on the ACT, encourage them to take the uh, SAT. Um, they may do better. So uh, I don't want them to get discouraged if, if one doesn't work out for them. So there's some really great resources there. Also, our office. Uh, we are more than willing to meet with our students and support them. So if they have questions about scheduling or they have questions about things in the post-secondary world, encourage them to come see us. And also, you all are very fortunate. The internet has some really great resources out there, specifically on those college websites. So if you have a student that's really interested in NKU, 
get on that NKU website and check it out. So what are colleges looking for? There's lots of things, as you can see, that they are looking for, but for the purposes of scheduling, since that's the topic of this conversation, they are really still looking about the difficulty, the rigor of the courses that students are selecting. So the purpose of me today is just to really say to you is, encourage your student, your senior next year, to just continue with the rigor that they've taken through high school, okay? Also, they do still look at different things about college prep courses, what their cumulative GPA is, Oftentimes, that's on the unweighted scale as far as for like merit-based scholarships. Um, demonstrated interest, this is kind of a very interesting trend that's been happening over the last year uh, or two, is that schools are tracking how interested your student is in their university, and this happens different ways. One is, is if uh, your student has reached out to the college rep, they are keeping track of that. If your student is receiving emails from their college, they're keeping track of that. Is your student deleting emails from their university? Are they responding? Are they attending summer camps? Did they do a class visit? Or not a class visit, a campus visit. Um, all of a sudden, they're keeping track of what I kind of call like a big brother score and to seeing how genuinely interested your student is in their campus. And uh, in some ways, it's kind of creepy that they're tracking all of this, but in other ways, if you think about that, if they have two applicants on paper that look identical, but your student has talked to the college rep, they have come and visited the campus, they've done a summer camp, and they're looking at making those offers or giving scholarship money, who do you think they're likely to give that to? So just be thinking about that. So we get a lot of questions in the counseling office. Is it really important that I go? I mean, I've been, I went to the campus over the weekend with my parents, that's great that you walked around, but if you didn't do it through the admissions office, then they can't track that interest, and that always helps you. So do be keeping that in mind. That's what we call that demonstrated interest score. Some schools will have things like interviews. I will tell you, in the age of technology and our kids, we've sort of lost some of those soft interpersonal skills. Uh, interviewing is a key part to that. So I will tell you, as parents and as students, be thinking about those interviews, whether it's for scholarships, whether it's for direct entry into the workforce, those, your ability to interview and keep that conversation is extremely important. So those are things that you can practice and work through at home as well. And of course, your activity involvement and the awards that you've had, you're gonna be wanting to think about that. As juniors, I also encourage you to start putting together your resume. Your resume is gonna be where you keep track of volunteer work, awards, uh, if you have a part-time job, any skills that you have, because I will tell you, more often than not for scholarships or even sometimes for admission, you have to provide a resume. And if you start keeping track of that stuff now, it's gonna be a whole lot easier than September of your senior year when you're trying to scrap that all together very quickly, okay? Testing, so although a lot of schools are going test optional, where can you find this? If you go to the admission page of the college or university that your student is interested in, they will have that information. Um, but although they're going optional, some schools do require writing, and there still is importance on that ACT because I'm gonna tell you, if your student is interested in taking a dual credit course next year, these ACT scores that come back on this March test could be the make or break as to whether or not your student is eligible to take certain dual credit courses. Okay, so there is definitely still importance on that. We get a lot of questions about uh, scores and what do they mean. Benchmark is really a, a fancy way of saying if your student is at grade level or if they are college or career ready. Okay, so if a student is college or career ready or they're at the grade level that is expected for the post-secondary institution, these are the scores in each of these subject areas that they are looking for your student to be at or above. It's not an end-all be-all, but it is definitely something as they're calculating those admission scores, they are wanting to see that your student is ready to come to college, okay? So as you get those scores back from that March ACT, those are kind of the goals that we're looking for. We get a lot of questions in our office about how to help students prepare for the ACT. We do have some great resources. Torch Prep, if you get online and type in Torch Prep, that's a local organization here that does do classes for students. Uh, they have some availability of online Saturday courses. There's typically some expense there with that. The thing that is free that is very, very good is we do have the test prep course on Naviance. When students log into their Naviance, which is that college and career platform that's online that we've been using with our students, 
When they log into Naviance and they go all the way down on the home page, it'll say test prep. When they click on that, it brings them to the actual ACT prep course that we pay for through Naviance. Um, and when the students get into that course, they can do lessons, they can take diagnostic tests. There's six full free ACT tests that are on there, um, as well as note cards, uh, all kinds of tools. So the kids can set up a full study plan through it, and it costs you nothing. We pick up the cost on that, and that is all in Naviance. So I always say you can't beat free, so that's always a good place to start. Khan Academy as well has some really great ACT prep that is free as well. So get out and, and check those things out, especially this summer. That might be a good time uh, if kids, you know, take their March ACT score. They're not super happy with it. They always have that chance to retake it as well before they start that uh, application process for colleges or universities. We talked about the college visit just a little bit, but visiting is super, super important. I talked about that in regards to the demonstrated interest score. Um, most colleges and universities do have virtual as well as in-person options. If you go on their admissions page, most of those colleges and universities will allow you to schedule online. So it is very, very easy to do. Students at Highlands actually get four college visit days that they can miss school to attend a college or university. Uh, our guidelines with that is it is limited to juniors and seniors, and we do ask that they do it before spring break. The reason is it's because we have such extensive AP and on-demand testing after that. We don't want students to miss those dates. So that does have to be in person. They get those four days. It can be used junior, senior year. And what they do is they use those days to go and visit those campuses. So what do you need to do on our end? How does the process work? Well, Ms. Bodner, who is our attendance secretary in the AP office, so when you're a visitor and you come in, she's usually who greets you at the desk there. You just need to call in on the attendance line parents and say, Johnny has a college visit today at UK, and he'll return tomorrow with documentation on his visit. So you call him in. Tomorrow when he comes to school, when you go on that visit, they'll give you some type of like an agenda or documentation that you've been there. They just return that to us the next day, and then it is coded as a college visit. Okay, so that's how the process works. Go visit, go see. And even if your student is really undecided about what they want to study or where they want to go, sometimes just seeing really helps things. Uh, you know, sometimes a campus that they thought they really wanted to be on, they realize it's much larger than they think. And even if they kind of just get an idea of the scale and the size of the campus that they want to be on, it just helps reduce that anxiety and worry and gives them information of how to uh, use that process to their benefit. So everybody's always worried about financial aid, so I did want to make a note that Mr. Bissick is here today. He is our financial guy. He really is our guru, has some great tips and tricks. Uh, go check out some of his sessions today, uh, as well as Kia is also doing some things. Um, Bob McDermott, who is our rep, is here as well on site. These are two really great websites that can help you as parents, as well as students, because you're gonna be signing potentially for some loans. So you need to understand what that is. These are two great websites. We also have a financial aid night that typically Dan does for us in September of 2022. He'll give you some really great uh, information about how to navigate, especially the FAFSA. If any of you've ever filled out the FAFSA, you know uh, it's, it's definitely a lengthy process. So just keeping in mind too that that FAFSA is available beginning October the 1st. So you want to make a note in your calendar of that uh, because that is something you want to fill out so that your students can get some extra money. All right, so other resources, Key Scholarship. Each summer you should be receiving a letter from Kia that indicates the money from the Key Scholarship program from the state that your student has earned based on their high school unweighted GPA. Your student should have an account through Kia that you can log in, so if you're like, I don't remember where this letter is or I'm not recalling it, you can get on Kia and they can request that uh, and you can get in and check that out. Also, the NCAA Clearinghouse has information uh, about those scholarships as well. NAIA, so specifically if your student is thinking about being an athlete uh, at the post-secondary world, NCAA or NAIA, there's really great information on there about eligibility and scholarship information. And then what I would say is it's not too early to start looking at dates for colleges and university scholarships because what we always tell our students, especially as seniors, you don't have to know where you're going your senior year, but you should know where you're applying. 
And those timelines and time management are so important because as they're getting into their senior year and they're carrying a rigorous course load, all of a sudden those first application deadlines start in October. Kids look at us and think we're crazy when it's like the first week of September and we're, we're in their classes. They're like, I'm not ready to think about this. And we're like, well, that's great because your first deadline's in six weeks. So uh, that timeline always takes those kids um, off guard that they just don't realize how quickly that happens. So it's really important to kind of have a handle of planning out for the senior year, not just about scheduling, but about those application deadlines so they can plan um, their time appropriately. Also, I mentioned the resume before to start putting that together. SCORE, which is one of those uh, college and career wedding readiness websites we have, they can start putting that in there now, okay? So that's a great place to store it. To store it. And then, of course, start doing some ACT or SAT prep uh, Torch Prep is an example, Naviance, um, and then the Common App. This is one that is uh, a website that many students use to apply to schools. It's important just to start doing your research. Get on there and just check it out. Uh, so before your student needs to use it, that they sort of understand how that can be used for the application process. Not everybody does use Common App, but I will tell you, it's very, very common that schools accept applications through this website. And then, of course, come and see us. Uh, we not only meet with all of our senior students in the fall in their classrooms, but we all individually meet with every single one of our seniors to guide them through that process. Um, so come see us, come check out our website. We are certainly here to help your students. Um, we do have a senior meeting, and I'm not sure why this is at the bottom here, so I do apologize because it's not on my screen, so I apologize that you can't see it. But we do do a senior parent meeting for students and their parents that takes place in early June. We'll be releasing what that date is as we get closer in the pack. Um, and that's gonna give you ideas of things to do over the summer in preparation for your senior year. I'm certainly just giving you an overview right now, but that will be in much more detail. and will be really helpful, especially you to get that jump start over the summer. We'll also do a repeat of that meeting in August. So if you're on vacation and you're unable to, to be there, no worries, we'll work with that information in August. So looking forward just to sort of recap a couple things. Don't forget that ACT test that's gonna be in March. The state does pick up the bill on that. Um, plan those summer visits. Um, you know, if they can't do it between, you know, after spring break, obviously, do the summer. It's not always the same because session at, at colleges, it's not gonna be that normal campus life, but, but certainly may work out well for your summer schedule. Um, do research opportunities to volunteer, do some summer work, um, get that resume going, and then don't forget to attend those meetings. I think those are really some key steps that you can do within the next <coughs> six months. If you need any help, this is who is all in our department and what last names of students that we do work with. Reach out to us if you have any questions. We are certainly here to help. I will be staying after for a couple minutes for my session before the next one starts. Uh, so this is the information that I have for you today. Please let me know. Pop on over if you have a question, but I do hope you have a great rest of the day, and thank you so much for coming.